Welcome to Decisions Snack Sandwich. Today I have a quick video for you on Dodo. Now I did do a video a long time ago, about three years ago on Dodo, but uh, Dodo has had significant upgrades. If you come to the docs, you can clearly see that uh, there is a version 2, uh, version 3 now. So there, there's quite a bit extra stuff that needs to be kind of covered and talked about. And uh, so all these versions, version 1, 2, 3, and as well as uh, this video here was created by, you know, me three years ago. Uh, and I had no idea what I was talking about. And this video's sound quality is terrible. So I've decided I'm going to erase this video from my library and replace it with the video that I'm creating right now. So uh, what does Dodo do? It's it's very different than most AMMs and uh, they don't even call themselves an AMM. That's how different it is. But it's a place where you can provide liquidity, you can swap your tokens and so forth. So I have this white paper here, uh, the Dodo uh, version one white paper from uh, years ago, right? Um, but I was given this to me from somebody. They sent me as a text message. Uh, so I don't, I can't actually find this thing listed anywhere. So it's going to be up to you to go and ask. If you want to read this white paper and confirm the things that I'm saying and understand deeper, then you're going to have to go to the Dodo Discord or Telegram and ask them for this white paper, assuming that they still have it and that they're willing to give it to you. Now, alternatively, you can come to the docs and read. It's a little bit a uh, different setup than normal. Like there's this home which is kind of more like all like an introduction to a whole bunch of stuff, the products, which kind of get actually into the weeds of everything. And then a developer docs up here at the top. Okay. So let's go through what does Dodo and how does it differ from other things? Okay. So here it this, there's a chart here that kind of shows you the, the bonding curve or the graph of Dodo, the Dodo curve versus the Uniswap curve. Now the Uniswap curve we're all familiar with, right? So as you buy tokens, right? The, the price of the, the, token goes up right so the price of so as you buy the price goes up and as you sell the price goes down based on this uh, constant product uh, curve right now dodos as you can see it's quite more flat okay so the price impact of selling and buying is less okay so if i buy the same amount of tokens on uniswap as i do on dodo then the price is going to go up slower on dodo than it does on uniswap now that's not what makes it really special okay so if we go over here we can see that the dodo curve actually moves with an oracle price so they take the market price right and i asked in the discord you know which ones how are they you know where are they looking for the oracle price and i, I haven't got a, an answer yet so i'm just going to carry on and that's something you can dig deeper on but basically they take the the market price so as you can see the the uniswap price has moved up right from from where it was before but the dodo price is the is 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 also moved up but the curve has stayed the same so it how, what does this mean? Okay, so basically the price on Dodo is the same as the price on other exchanges. So there's no like ARB per se, like it doesn't need to be ARBed in order for the price on Dodo to reflect the price, to be equal to the price outside the market. However, when the only reason why there's a curve then here is to justify price impact. So if you come and you make an enormous trade, then you're going to have a large price impact, okay? So you're, that's what this curve is kind of uh, being used for on Dodo as, as I understand it, okay? Now there's another thing here is that uh, Dodo uses single-sided liquidity provision. So you can come to the USDC ETH pool and you can deposit USDC or you can deposit ETH. And each one of them have their own like bonding curve, their own curve. As you can see, this curve doesn't look anything like this curve. And the reason why is because perhaps this price has been changed, whereas this one necessarily hasn't, okay? Now, to try to understand that, let's move down a little bit to, the, to this thing kind of here, okay? So when someone comes to a pool and they sell, they, they buy some tokens or they sell some tokens, then it changes the amount of tokens inside the pool. So if you look at the, the coloration, right, the coloration is the, 
the the amount of tokens inside the pool right because of because of trading so at first maybe the the pool has started with like this many tokens and this many tokens uh, of of the eth and usdc or something and when someone sells it then it reduces the amount of of tokens and increases the amount of the other tokens, right? At like normal pools, right? However, in the Dodo system, they remember those initial situations, those uh, that initial amount. So here they are even, right? So if you think about it, let's say I bring 100 USDC and I bring 100 USDC worth of ETH and I put them in those pools, then it's going to be like the middle situation, right? And then people will trade and those those things will come along. But what happens if you come along with another 100 USDC and you add it? Then this bar, this this B line is this this the, this line that's not moving is going to move up. So because you've added some, I've added some and only I added ETH. Right. So it remembers how many tokens I put in of each kind. And it knows that I want those back eventually. And this is the re the reason why they do this is to try to combat impermanent loss. So this is how I understand why that there is different curves in here is because there's different amounts of debt or owed tokens to the LP providers because people provide, you know, they they provide the token that they want. They don't have to provide, you know, like in Uniswap 50/50. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. Okay. Now, uh, as as people uh, provide, uh, pro as people swap the pool, they're taking away my ETH. Let's say I only apply ETH to this pool, and as people are swapping the ETH, they're taking away my ETH. Like let's say they are buying ETH, right? So they're taking my ETH, but I want my ETH back, right? So what the pool does is it adjusts the 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 uh, it adjusts the bonding curve, right? To uh, to encourage people to deposit more ETH, okay? So in order, if they deposit more ETH or to swap it backwards, right? To, in order to get me my ETH back, okay? Now, of course, there are trading fees as well, right? When you swap through the pool, there are trading fees and those trading fees go to the person in kind, right? So if, if I deposit, if I want some ETH, right, I'm going to swap in some USDC and take away some ETH, but I'm going to leave some ETH behind. And that ETH is pro rata shared with all of the people who supplied ETH. OK, so that's it. Like the USDC people get nothing uh, because they only just assuming they only deposited USDC because the, the trade only went the one way. Right. So the pool. Uh, the, the system encourages people to to bring back that equal area that to bring it back to this situation where the amount of tokens in this pool are equal to the amount of tokens that were deposited in the pool plus the fees right plus the the swap fee okay now there's also a situation where like let's say this is USDC over here uh, this B token is USDC and I want out at this point there's a deficit of USDC there, so it is going to charge me to withdraw. So if I want to take my USDC out when there is a deficit of USDC, then I'm going to have to pay a fee to re withdraw, withdraw these tokens from the pool. However, if in this situation, if I come and deposit the tokens in the pool, then I'm going to get a bonus. And that bonus is equal to the price impact or the slippage, if you will, that the swapper took in order to create this deficit. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Um, let's moving on. Uh, what else do we have? I think that's uh, that, I think that's enough for version one. I think you have a pretty good understanding of version one for the most part. And then we can move over to the docs and kind of talk a little bit about some of these other versions. So in version one, they say most of the most of the uh, the version one has maintained like is mostly still alive with stable coin pools. However, the volatile pools have been migrated to version version three and so forth. But let's talk about version two first because there's some different things inside here. So there's this Dodo vending machine. Now, Dodo vending machine is kind of what you would consider like uh, what I I'm kind of akinning it or or similar similarizing it to a bonding curve 
like token sale. So uh, I put a whole bunch of tokens in there, right? Because I minted them, they're my project tokens, right? And people can come and buy them, but they can also sell back to that on along that bonding curve. So they call it a vending machine. So I just need to fill it up with my tokens and people can come and buy, but that they can also return my tokens to the vending machine as opposed to like a pop where you can't, you know, you can't get your money back from a, you know, a Coca-Cola vending machine, right? So then they have these private pools. Now these private pools are for like market makers and stuff like that. So a private pool is where is a pool that only I can add and remove liquidity from because I want it to be private. It's my, I want to control something about that pool, right? And then they have these stable pools. Now, these stable pools were created in order to, uh, for people to be able to uh, uh, kind of not have to wait to get their tokens out. Because like, if you think about it, if we go back to this, to this situation here, uh, in the case where the, the, let's say this, this pool is USDC, USDT, and I put USDC in there and currently the def I have a deficit, then I have to kind of wait to get out, right? Because if I want to get out now, then I, uh, I'll get, you know, I'll, I'll have to pay a fee. I'll get, the, you know, and the fee is also determined based on the amount of deficit there is, like it, it scales with the deficit, right? So in order to mitigate like people from having this problem where they, you know, if I deposit USDC in here and then it's in a deficit, I can't get my tokens out. Then they've created this like other like special stable pool where you can, you know, you, you can deposit, you would basically run it like a normal stable swap pool where you would deposit both tokens and you would get out both tokens as well. Okay. Now that's kind of what they did in version two to kind of give some more functionality and to adapt to the market situations and to the, to the use case of the product. And then they came up with version three, which is pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Okay. This is kind of, it kind of feels a lot more like a Uniswap, uh, uh, concentrated liquidity in some senses. And then it also has this like strange funding model thing, which I'll, I'll explain in a sec. So if we take a look at these graphs, right? So here they look a little bit different, but they are, it's the same as the graph I've showed you. It's just kind of, you know, this is the, the bid price and this is the ask, the, the, the depth of the, of the pools, right? So as, uh, in the classic uh, classic PMM, so in the curve I showed you before, the the amount of tokens inside the pool as as things are as the price is changing, then the depth is changing as well, right? But they've changed it so that they're truncated, so that the ask price and the bid price they don't move together; they become separated. So you can end up with a gap in the middle where there's no like there's no there's no liquidity here for selling as well as you can set a max bid price and a, a minimum, sorry, max ask price and a minimum bid price. And that creates a situation that's very similar to Uniswap where you have price ranges. And when the token leaves those price ranges, then you have, there's no tradability of this token. Okay. Um, and then the, the other thing I wanted to show you is this kind of this vault system where, uh, People can come with a token, so they can deposit, uh, let's say, ETH into this vault, right? And then the people who are very experienced with market making can borrow the ETH from the vault, and you know they could hedge that ETH if they needed to because of imperm. There, there is the possibility of temporary impermanent loss. I, I guess it's still impermanent, right? Impermanent loss, uh, but you know it's mitigated lesser, right? in this system. So the, these market makers, these people who know how to really, how to really run liquidity pools well, they can borrow their, the assets from this vault and use them to, to, to uh, create pools or to, to add liquidity to pools in order to generate fees. And then those fees are shared and the, you know, interest is paid to these people who, whose ETH they borrowed. Okay. Now there is some talk in here about like, you know, the protocol will take some fees of the, this, it, assuming the DAO votes. So you'll have to double check to see if there are, if the DAO is making any fees throughout all of this system and whether or not those fees are being shared with uh, the, the voting, the, uh, the V -do Dodo holders, the people who have locked V Dodo in order for voting Dodo and so forth. Okay.
And then they have this Dodo X, which is basically like cross-chain swapping kind of, because if you come here and you go to Dodo X, you can see they have cross-chain swapping, which is kind of bridging and swapping at the same time through their pools and, and so forth. So, uh, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot here. There's a, this is kind of like an introductory video, just a kind of a little refresher. And uh, I really wanted to mostly just talk mostly about this P, PMM model and how people can, you know, individually provide liquidity to one side of the LP and how the system kind of tries to, you know, f cause them to not maintain impermanent loss. Like if ETH goes up, 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 right? You, what you want as a liquidity provider is to get your ETH back, right? You don't want to necessarily have to take USDC. You you would like to get all your ETH back. So this system's ability or it's, it's designed to encourage people to re equalize this pool it is pretty ingenious okay and uh i also really like the the curve is is in this case the curve is it has less price impact however the price follows the this uh the market price okay so uh that's pretty much it i uh, hope this has been interesting and useful i i know i didn't explain it perfectly but i hope it has been it has been insightful and if this is something interesting for you as always you know i would encourage you to come read the docs uh, ask about this white paper and see if you can you know get a better understanding of this than i have by reading this docs today okay so that's it for today thank you and goodbye.